All right, so we should be live. Oh, yes. Now, can you see me? Yes. Oh, my gosh. I am so excited. Uh, we are live and recording. I'm Halcyon. I'm here live with Mark Day. Uh, Mark Day, you may and hopefully know him from his 24 hours at Burning Man videos, which are actually all of Burning Man from setup and build through Strike. And I consistently am so impressed. It is the most inclusive and accurate portrayal of this event that cannot be portrayed. And so I am so grateful for your efforts in and consistency in trying to capture and share what this event is. So thank you for that first and welcome, Mark. Thank you. Uh, I will take the compliments. Um, I'm always happy to be told that people were entertained. Um, as I have often said, if you see me meandering around at Burning Man, even if I'm carrying a four gallons of pee to the port a potty, <laughs> I will happily put that jug down and hang out for a while. So yes. Hi. Oh, so that was an open invitation to share urine with Mark Day. So uh, do not pass that opportunity by. And but the reason we're connecting today yeah. is because oh, you have been uh, exploring a new avenue of art recently and using these AI creation tools to share portrayals of, of Burning Man that I think are uh, exciting and triggering. I wonder, could you explain what the hell you're doing? Sure. Um... I can't even remember how many months ago. I'm not a very technical person. Um, and a few months ago, I think I saw people were starting to post um, images online from DALL-E, um, which was, I think, one of the first, again, I'm really not technical, kind of um, AI image generation platforms that allow you to enter text prompts and out comes, a, you know, out comes an image. Um, you have some control over it, but you know it's it's a little bit like putting coins in a slot machine and pulling and just hope maybe this one will work. Um, and pretty quickly, I was kind of like, "Oh, this looks cool. This looks fun. I want in on that." Um, I don't really consider myself to be a visual artist per se, um, but you know, the first thing I ever wanted to do at school, if you'd asked me when I was like twelve years old, is draw comic books. Um, and I specifically remember, I'm, I'm meandering off now, but I specifically remember sitting one day in the art class and the kid next to me, Tom, and looking at my drawings and looking at his and realizing that he was so far ahead of me. Now, fair enough, his father was an art teacher. Um, and maybe the answer would be to just double down and, you know, practice drawing an eyeball or a face or whatever. But, you know, I was pretty discouraged. So I can draw reasonably well. Um, if you gave me a Sharpie, I could do you a cartoon? Um, but this really kind of opened my eyes to, okay, if you have an idea, you can get more than just out down on paper. And, and I just started playing around with them. Um, and, Before you go on, I want to sure. touch on what you just said about uh, being in art class and being discouraged, because I, I left high school with a thought that maybe I wanted to be an artist. And in college, my very first drawing class, I realized Oh, these, I'm not, I'm not even close to the middle of this. There's so many right. people so much better than me. And we have this thing in our culture, I think, which uh, Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert gets really into this, this idea that in our culture, we get to a certain point and we kind of force you to, to, to decide, can you make a living doing this? And right. if you, if you're not good enough, we say, nope, you're going to be a consumer and you're going to outsource your creation. And one of the massive, I think, so, gifts of Burning Man is that it says, oh, whoa, 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 you don't have, there's no one who's going to say you're good or bad. If you right. are, if you are flexing your creative and creation muscle and it's authentic, it's welcome here. And I think that's one of the reasons why it transforms people is that we, sure. we go from that imposed consumer identity into a artist identity. And so this is maybe just the newest uh, permission that we're being right given. and in some ways you know i think um in 1999 when me and a couple of friends from scotland stood and hammered rebar into the playa and bent plastic tubes over it and wrapped them in christmas tree lights and made a tunnel and days later with a line of people out onto the playa because it was pretty easy to 
pull a crowd on the esplanade way back when. And I, I'm sure at some point someone said to me, oh, are you the artist? And, and being Scottish and very self-effacing and, and very much, you know, don't have too many ears and graces, kind of just laughed the whole thing off. Like, mm-hmm. this is some nonsense we put together for our own amusement. Um, and, you know, it took me time to kind of like, you know, be open to, you know, embracing that label myself. Um and and still primarily my you know favorite way of engaging with you know burning man is more to kind of comment on other things and document them um but you know as i say i was kind of churning out these images and i could start like little bits of my brain were like oh you could make a cartoon if you make enough of them and they're similar enough but different enough and i understand enough about video editing to kind of work with similarity or contrasts. And I started making some just stuff for my own amusement. Um, One thing that's kind of interesting to me about um, the the platform that I ended up using a lot, which is a platform called Midjourney, is that all of the text prompts that we'll we'll get to this shortly enrage some people um, are public by default. So you can go to the community feed and see a, an image and think, wow, that looks good. And if you're me, go, but what if you applied the same set of artistic influences and you know other prompts to some Burning Man subject matter? Let's say instead of it being about a street in Tokyo with people with high fashion um, headwear on, it was El Pulpo. And the minute those start things started coming out, I was very delighted by it. Um, I just before Burning Man last year put together sort of an image gallery that was um, somewhat inspired by um, a photographer, um, Dave David Hill. Um, I think it was him, and if, apologies if it wasn't. If, apologies if it was Duncan Rawlson or one of the, the many other you know, Burning Man photographers, but I think it was Dave who did um, Burning Man After the Rain. Um, And it was the year that the gate road closed and people sat there for, you know, I was fortunate enough to be inside that year. Um, I think it was the year of the Temple of Promise. And when the rain ended, I guess he, you know, put some Wellington boots on or whatever and and captured all of these images of um, very empty, desolate, covered in wet things, almost the emptying out of Burning Man. And I think that was in the back of my head where I was like, well, what if you actually had pictures of it, a rainy day at Burning Man? So I made a bunch. Um, I um, compiled some into a, a little video. Others I just posted together as like a gallery on a couple of Facebook groups and, and um, Burning Man Reddit, which I'll, I'll get to shortly, I'm sure. Uh, and it kind of went somewhat viral. And, I, you know, it, it was, you know, I, I have enough of an understanding, to be honest, about some of the levers you might want to pull if you want something that kind of goes a little bit viral. Now, there's no formula. It's like, you know, it's not like every, if it worked every time, um, I would be doing it every time. But anyway, I, you know, it was the timing was right. People were all kind of stoked up with the kind of energy. We're going to Burning Man in three weeks. I'm spending all my time when I should be packing or um, whatever, finishing up my work by just endlessly refreshing Facebook to see, get that kind of Burning Man community dopamine hit of we're all heading towards the same thing with different sense of purpose, but we're all funneling towards that one thing. Um, and if I've not meandered too far off the point, I mean, I did it, it's, you know, you can make text prompts and, you know, there's a process of trial and error. Um, sometimes it's about making the prompt really simple. Sometimes it's about making the prompt really lengthy. Um, sometimes it's about going, well, what if you take put octopus before Burning Man? Is that different to if you put octopus after Burning Man? So there's, um, we're heading towards the, you know, the conversation of, is it even art? Um, is it the destruction of art, but I was just playing around with it. And so before we get into you destroying art and burning man. Um, right. So like, it's interesting you talk about like the, the, ex- the exploration and experimentation with these words, it right. almost makes me think of like, you know, early painters having to experiment with pigment, you know, you're trying to figure out what is the way that I can express this thing in a new way. Now behind you, 
Uh, and if you can, you can do a search for it online, I think, and look on your feed, you have a, a video slideshow of images of Burning Man in 1963, I believe. Yes. And there are two images in it, one that looks like the pink ride in 63 and one that looks like a pink heart arch. And so I've had a number of people, yeah. have you seen this? Have you seen this? Have you seen this? And I feel this great pride that it's like <laughs> the pink ride and pink heart have actually <laughs> they're, they're, they're so strong that they have punctured the singularity time and space and they right. showed up in, in AI. So we, can you maybe if it's not a, a trade secret, but, well, it's a kind of text prompt that, you know, one of those 63 images might have. Sure. Um, I, well, I think, you know, just being before I get to that, one of the, the funny things for me is trying to put together a gallery that both feels like it's representative of the aesthetics of Burning Man but does it in a way that's interesting enough that it's not just, I didn't just type in art installation at Burning Man mm -hmm. turn. Um, excuse me, I belched. Um, in this particular instance, and I will be 100% transparent about this because I think it gets into what a lot of people find troubling about AI art is I was scrolling through the community feed on um uh, on Mid Journey, and I saw some images that kind of had this whole like 1960s Star Trek aesthetic, which is, I'll be showing my age here, but like one of the first, one of my first memories is that kind of the whole look of, you know, Kirk and Spock wandering around these slightly wooden set sets with big dials on things. And, you know, it wasn't like I went looking for things to then Burning Manify. It just, it just seemed obvious. Now, as I mentioned earlier, all of these prompts are by default public. Um, and my understanding is that the people who developed Mid Journey specifically wanted them to be public by default so that people would remix and learn from each other um, how to make these kind of images. Um, so, you know, regardless of how, and again, we'll get to it. Some people think it may be damaging art. There, there, there was a philosophy of, hey, this is like remix culture. This is an opportunity to see what other people are doing. If you want to keep your prompts private, you have to pay extra. Interesting. Um, it reminds me of like er, the early web, you know, you could just view source and learn how people right. do things and then go, oh, I'm going to take your idea and add pictures of me and my face because I'm, you know, a cocky bastard, but right. uh, okay, so I, I'm, I'm chomping at the bit. So can you talk about the Reddit, the backlash, and okay. what, are the, what are some of the things that, that have, have triggered? Right. right. Very quickly, I will just to answer your earlier question, say that, you know, the, the prompt that for these particular oh, yes. images was relatively long, including things like film grain and the type of let photography lens, you can specify photographic styles and so on and so forth. And it was really more a process of, of subtraction to see how do I get this to where I want. Oddly enough, um, one of the things that I really noticed is that none of the images really were centered, which is probably not interesting to anyone else, but like, you know, that per I wanted things where it was kind of clear what the subject matter was. And I don't know if it's just the photography of the era, but everything was kind of skewed with. So anyway. I, um, one of my favorite places to hang out on in the sort of online year round Burning Man world is Reddit's r forward slash Burning Man subreddit. Um, it's, it's a great place for more kind of detailed conversation. Um, it's primarily text driven. So, you know, it's really less, you know, it, it you know, and it, you know, to me, functionally, it's like if things are interesting, you vote them up. If they're not, you or you don't think they belong there, you vote them down. If you don't like them, you always have the opportunity to scroll past. Um, there's, you know, it's not like a newspaper where there's a finite number of pages. Um, and I guess I hadn't visited there in a while, and I saw a post that was like, we need to have a discussion about banning AI art from this forum. And I thought that was fundamentally interesting, a little annoying uh, as somebody who's been playing around with it as a, you know, a fun way to entertain myself and hopefully amuse other people. And also, and also frankly, a little sad, you know, I, I, I think this AI art um, is 
you know, can be troubling for people and, and, and raises a lot of questions that are worth exploring rather than just kind of pushing them away to one side. Um, and I, you know, I, I think the thought that I landed on through some online conversations, and I don't know if they were so much conversations as me berating people and people berating me back. Um, sometimes this does not bring out my best self, I'll be honest. Um, was really that, you know, this art, this this form of generating images is so powerful that it seems to have turned some people from anyone can be an artist, everybody should try their hand at making art, get ideas out of your head and onto the page by any means necessary to, whoa, 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 not everyone can be an artist. Whoa, 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 this isn't even art. Whoa, 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 all you're doing is typing words in. And not only am I unhappy seeing it here but I don't want other people to have the opportunity to see it here either mm. I want to restrict other people's opportunity in a forum that is designed for people to vote things up and down let's remove it altogether now I wasn't around the previous couple of weeks and I do understand that you know anytime you have like a, an online community People get annoyed when the same questions get asked over and over. But, the, you know, online communities are cyclical. I mean, the Burning Man year starts, you know, at a certain time and ends at a certain time. There's not a lot to talk about in November and December. I don't really see the problem. Um, but I also know that, yeah, I mean, if you if, if all you did was go to Mid Journey or DALI or any number of, you know, there are a number of other platforms you can do this and just typed in Burning Man and got a bunch of images and then thought, oh, these are cool. I'm going to go and post these on Reddit. And as somebody put it, Karma Farm, as in get up votes for this thing. It is pretty low effort. Um, it probably through repetition gets a little annoying. Um, it's a tool, so it's only as interesting as the, the way you use it. So if all you did was generate... Um, five or six images that look vaguely Burning Man-esque and then post them on Reddit, then, you know, I, I I get why to that degree that, you know, some people felt something must be done. We, we, we can't let this stand. And this stuff has nothing to do with Burning Man. Um, and I was like, well, you know, the top post in the subreddit on the day that I looked was a funnel made of bread that looked a bit like the Temple of Promise. Mm -hmm. Below that was a picture of a man wearing, a, a, a portly gentleman wearing a bra made of watermelons, not at Burning Man, with the, the title, we need to see this at Burning Man. Three posts down was like a weird exercise machine with the exclamation, we need to see this at Burning Man. So really, the, the narrow needle through which things have to be relevant to Burning Man through which all of these posts had somehow shimmied through seems actually pretty broad and broad enough to my mind to accommodate people playing around with tools. But that's one part of it. And, you know, I, I to some degree want to get, give you a chance to get a word in edgeways, but I think, you know, obviously for some people we're angry, it's not art. You're just typing in words. This is... And then there was a lot of what I honestly would describe as, and I'm not a mind reader, I can't see into people's hearts and minds, but, you know, a lot of um, confirmation bias, which is not just in terms of, you know, that kind of psychological thing where you form an opinion and then start looking around for only things which agree with your opinion. But there's also, I think, a level of um, confirmational bias, which really means that, you know, and I, and I think some people have studied this in the world of marketing. People make decisions often for very emotional reasons and then start manufacturing rational reasons for why their emotional decision makes sense. So, you know, there were people posting, this is flooding out real art. This is, I'm anxious that I can't see the real Burning Man art that is being posted here in November and early December when apparently you can post a picture of some bread and get upvotes. So, you know, it, it, I understand why people are feel frustrated. Um, I would entreat them not to turn into, into is entreaty a word? I don't know. I would encourage them not to become art censors, right. um, to become art gatekeepers, um, to create a purity test for what is and is not related to Burning Man. 
And the funny thing is, I think one of the other posts at the time was, here is a plastic pat of butter and we've pulled up the lid and look, the butter on the lid looks a little bit like the Burning Man logo. So again, that's the context. That's some context. But I understand there's another context, which is I've worked hard to learn how to make art or I have friends who have devoted their lives to doing this and suddenly their employment is in question. Suddenly they're, you know, the thing that they have worked so hard to achieve is being undermined by this. I will also note that I decided at that point that I would make an entire Burning Man made out of butter. So I was inspired <laughs> by this pat that looked like butter, that looked like the Burning Man logo, to just do the whole thing. And and, and in that, you can kind of see it's the same. Po- I'm, do- I'm a one trick pony. I'm just taking things and going, what if Burning Man was like this? I'm not making big artistic statements. It's kind of fun. Some, you know, the when I posted the um the 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 Burning Man in 1963 video on Reddit, it was the top post on Reddit with 500 and whatever likes, and I, you know, a conversation underneath it, good and bad. So I'm hopeful that the um the people who moderate um that particular subreddit will remain open-minded to the idea that this is just a tool and I get that it's you know in the cyclical world of online communities you can see the same things over and over and it's a little bit tiring if you're you know if your entire identity is based on as mine perhaps is is based on things around Burning Man um but I also you know it's to me it's kind of fun and well, I think what's going to be really interesting is to see if the inspiration can continue. And like, will we see somebody this year at the burn make a installation that or a, an outfit creation that is inspired by images of 1963 Burning Man? Sure. Will we see a sculpture that looks like butter? You know, will we see right. will we, I last night I put some. Uh, purple and blue in my hair because a Lensa AI portrait of mine had a hairdo that I'm like, oh, I love that. I want to take that. Now, I think we touched on something also about this idea of, I just read a, a, a tweet that said, censorship of AI is going to be the most significant determination of our future culture, you know, in the next hundred years. And the, this idea of of deciding what is art, it seems almost hilarious you know like if, if, if Burning Man got us to anything or you know Duchamp's fountain I mean do we, have we not gotten to a place where you got if we we got to get out of the way of gatekeeping and deciding what art is for true expression to happen so I, I I'm with you I certainly hope that that moderation does not decide the way that we're allowed to talk and create well I hope I hope so too I don't know that I'm hopeful but I hope so um and you know there are you know there are broader issues around this, like for example, the data sets that AI is based on. Harvest, excuse me, I'm belching a lot. Stop drinking fizzy water, Mark. Um, is you know you know building on stylistic riffs of other artists' work, um, mm-hmm. but th- that's not necessarily for me to defend or attack in terms of. If I just type in Burning Man made of butter enough times and find enough images that I that that make me smile and put them together. I though I on some level, um, I think AI is going to change so many things in the the near and long-term future that I'm fiddling while Rome burns. And I would invite other people to fiddle while Rome burns rather than complain about the fiddling while Rome burns. And and I will note that. In my day job, um, a lot of what I do is writing. Um, I have tried a bunch of different um, AI writing platforms, um, which kind of, you know, do things like, they're basically like, um, what do you call it? Autocomplete on steroids, you know. Write a, write a couple of bullet points and it's going to write the essay for you. Is it going to be a good essay or a bad essay? Well, Open GT, I, I'm terrible with names. It's Open AI and re- launched this chat, um, which is the other thing that P- GPT, I'm reading this off a piece of paper, obviously. The AI research firm Open AI has a new chatbot, Chat GPT, 
which had trained on a language model from the previously and blah, 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 blah. Um, one of the things that I did and maybe trying, possibly failing to make my point online was I asked OpenGT um, for some ideas around introverts presenting as extroverts at Burning Man. And mm. in a very quick flash, it produced five different things that were things like, you know, a mirror, you know, a mirrored face where you could observe other people without being observed yourself and so on and so forth. Um, now, uh, you know, the, obviously that's not the same as coming up with an idea yourself, um, but it can be a sounding board. Um, maybe you don't have the resources of a graphic designer available to you. You know, there are websites like fiverr.com where you can go and get, you know, very cheaply people to do design work for you that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not a fan of the gig economy. I'm not a fan of things that drive down um, work in, in those respects. Um, but uh, I can't, what, what was my point? My point I mean, was something or other. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, I admit like my first reaction to seeing this art was uh, discomfort and I did not, I, I was, uh, it was unsettling is the first thing I wrote about it. And then I had this realization that uh, it's happening. You know, it's yeah. kind of like uh, I can resist and or I can fiddle as Rome Burns and just, you know, ride the wave and see what kind of magic can be produced in this way. You know, it, I remember, you know, you know, in the early Internet, you know, there were people that were like, oh, I don't do computers, you know, and it's like you for how many years could you could you resist go like I'm sure there were people that like these washing machines are taking away our sure. jobs you know and these it's like yeah that's that's totally true and if I just I I feel like you can go off grid and you can decide that you are not going to participate in the this evolutionary step of expression and culture and intelligence and and as a, as a tool and, and see how you can embrace it or you can fight it and if you fight reality you're going to lose 100 percent of the time but uh as byron katie likes to say so i in, embrace our new ai overlords and i sure. encourage you to continue uh pushing people's buttons well i mean at the end of the day i i would much rather push people's amusement buttons than their reflexive rage buttons but, you know, sometimes I can get sucked into um, a little bit of that, too. Um, I, you know, I I suspect, I, I, I wonder, maybe I don't suspect, I wonder if this will blow over. Um, I was on, I was, you know, regularly participating in Reddit when crowdfunding became a thing. And it was going to be the end of volunteering at Burning Man, you know, how can you compare sending someone $20 and getting a sticker in return to physically showing up at a build site and, and hammering away at a piece of art? And I think, understandably, one of the things that a lot of online communities did is just basically ban crowdfunding posts or ban crowdfunding posts from people who had not previously participated in the communities or made them tag them so it was easier for them to be avoided and it, it blew over after a while we all you know we all survived it I think realistically it's less a part of how Burning Man art gets made than it was when it was a new thing that everybody kind of assumed was going to work for their project and then maybe discovered the hard way that it just because the you know the mechanism exists doesn't mean the the desire exists on the part of burners to support every you know I you know art project that comes along. Um, as you mentioned yourself, there's a new app where you can or there's an app where you can send a bunch of your pictures and it will it will train the model to spit out a bunch of images of um you and a bunch of different artistic styles. I haven't done it myself yet. Um, I've been busy making things out of butter. Um, but I suspect that, you know, over the next week or two, people are going to get really tired of looking at those images on social media because everybody's going to be like, look, here's my new profile pic. Now, 
I think for some people, they're going to be delighted at how they're portrayed. And I think it can be fun. And there probably are arguments against, well, do you really want them to have your images in their data set or whatever? I don't, I, I haven't researched that. I don't really know. But I think there are ways for this to be, you know, a tool that you can use. Um, or there are, you know, I, I'm, the other thing that I was reminded of a few years ago at Burning Man, I'm going to say I can't even remember when, um, maybe 19, 19, no, 2015, um, there's a Dutch artist um, called Dadara, I believe, uh, who brought um, an artwork to Burning Man that was called Like For Real. And it was, um, it was like a big representation of the... the you know what we would all recognize as the the, the or we many of us would recognize as the facebook like um button um the thumb the big thumb the thumb the thumb yeah and i think he was looking to kind of create a dialogue around what that meant are you know are these online likes a valid substitute for real interaction and and i it was quite an interesting piece to go and be near for a while because for some people it was just one more thing to stand next to and take your picture next to, you know? And I think I said myself at the time online, this is going to be a lot of people's Facebook profile pictures when you get mm -hmm. it done. Meanwhile, there were some guys there in white robes who were there as part of the project that were saying, Hey, Hey, you know, and they were people would be go, Oh, sorry, I won't take a picture. And they were going, no, 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 no. Take the picture, but let's have a dialogue first. Let's talk about what you're getting from this, what you might not be getting from it. And obviously it didn't work every time because some people were not maybe in the right space to engage with it. Or again, we're just touring around, cycling around, going, oh, here's 20 selfies of me doing 20 things. But, you know, you can take things like social media and, you know, explore what that does to us as a community, uh, explore how we interact with each other um i know we're live on i believe we're live on facebook now sometimes um some of the facebook burning man groups can feel a little toxic because um again people get annoyed when they see repetition or the you know we have this thing where like sarcasm or snark is our culture and it justifies maybe behavior that you wouldn't do um to somebody's face. And I'm going to say sometimes I can be guilty of posting things online that I wouldn't say to people's faces. Um, I think it would be interesting to have conversations with people about this, but I haven't yeah. really felt like I've participated in many conversations so far. I feel like for the most part, I have just felt a lot of pushback and a lot of this bothers me. So yeah. I want it to go away. Yeah, you know, the, the, I want to encourage people. I just recorded episode four of my new podcast called Stay Sparked. And the topic is avatar creation, this Lenza app. And, you know, how is this or is this not a positive tool for us to visualize and, and see our, the best versions of ourselves? You know, I, and you, I think that we're at a place right now with the pendulum is like super strong to like, look at this, you know, and it's super triggering in the same way that, you know, I have been, Burning Man inspired me to be an outspoken visual representative of my bold avatar version of myself, which I've been doing for a long time. And it is very triggering for people. You know, for 20 years, I've had people attacking me and calling me all sorts of names. Now we're at a point where people do tend to share their lives online. And now in the last, you know, week, now people are sharing these idealized versions of themselves. Right. And so I think that it's part of this evolution. I do agree with you. I think that there is going to be a moment it's happening right now in many people's minds, but you know, very soon people are going to be like, okay, okay, okay. Let's let's I'm craving a little bit of the real, which I think is normal. And, and I don't think the idealized or this AI version is going to make anything absolutely in the same way. Like you, you can have a perfect plastic set of dishes made, but no one is, is stopping their desire to have ceramics. You know, sure. there, there's there it's, it's both. And so we're getting a little, uh, I, before we, we close up, because I don't think we're going to ever kind of finish this topic. I think sure. we're at the very beginning of these conversations, and I'm glad that you are willing to, you know, inspire people to have the conversations. But uh, any closing thoughts and how can people find more of what you are creating uh, online? Um, closing thoughts would be basically 
if you are so inclined, go and try these things for yourself. Um, then decide how you feel, perhaps. Um, I often think about it as being like, um, I've certainly had dreams, you know, at certain times, like I was at Burning Man, but it was on a train. I, I was at Burning Man, but it was in the woods. I was at Burning Man, but it was on the Titanic. I, I don't know. And I think some of these things, to me, these are like visual waking dreams. They're, to, to me, it's like a, a, a dream version. Of, this is perhaps a way of kind of like playing around with what the multiverse could be in a way that maybe is more accessible than when it was like, well, you need a VR helmet. It's like, you know, one of the things I posted last week was, uh, well, if you were a, you know, big shot Burning Man artist and money was no object and you had all the resources in the world, if you wanted to see a, a giant cow made of gold on the playa, well, at least now you could go and type those things into something and hit and, you know, see you, you could see things that otherwise are probably only ever going to live in your head. And that, to me, is what art is all about taking mm. things that you can see in your head and being able to look at them outside of your head um as for where people can find more of my stuff mostly um 24 hours at burning man videos on youtube um our endless endless hours of me ranting at a camera in front of various art pieces and also interviewing some artists um and I, you know, I've been posting some of the the AI stuff. Well, most of the AI stuff that I thought was interesting on an Instagram account called it's like Burning underscore Man underscore AI. Now someone has started one called Burning Man underscore AI. That's not me. Okay. Um, Bastards. The swines. Well, um, so yeah, yeah, beautiful. And, and I, I don't know if you've looked outside today, but the sky is magnificent. It's always my. I don't have a good view of it from here, but I'm, I have a very good view of it from um, my home office. And in a way, when you were talking about becoming the, you know, living your icon, it, it went from a truism that I liked to say to something that when it became time to move house, I was like, what if I really had a great view? Made it happen. Yay. See, there's something about, you know, putting things into your your visualizations and i think this tool is 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 a it's a beginning of a, a new realm in that well dude thank you so much thank you for your, your continued gifts uh to the burning man community and uh i look forward to talking with you again thank you mark cheers bye